All right, first 200 mile impression of the E-Ray. So this is my wife's car. I still own my Z06, which has 10,000 miles on it. Previously owned a Stingray, drove that over 20,000 miles. Have owned several EVs, um, Lightnings, multiple Tesla, um, Volkswagen E-Golf, all sorts of stuff. So it's kind of an interesting comparison here between everything. And again, this is the first 200 miles here. Uh, not past break-in period, um, but the, the vehicle is, is different enough to explain even at this level. Um, it, it, honestly, in probably the, the earliest one to start on is just talking about um, the regen, right? So Chevy's done a really good job um, with managing regen on this, um, but there's some interesting things about it. So when, like right now, I don't know if you can hear this, but when the electric engine, mo electric motor, is just motoring and not being driven, see like right now we're at zero horsepower, you can actually hear like, it sounds like a power steering pump almost, or like a loud tire that is the sound it makes um, when it's not under uh, any sort of load. So see as I get on braking right now, the sound changes and you can actually, um, see the region kick in. Now, what's interesting is on braking, um, regen is very seamless with with the brake feel. So you feel like you're on the brakes, but you're not on the brakes. It's actually, for the first 25% of braking or so, it's going into regen. So we'll try this again here. So light off the throttle, not much change, go into brake. You can see it going negative horsepower there. That's really that's going into kind of like a artificial charge plus mode there to uh, slow the motor down, uh, slow the car down with the motor and um, charge the battery at the same time. So brilliant job there. Um, what's interesting too is if you're driving this car at a higher uh, engine RPM, so say sometimes I'm on these switchbacks and obviously again not going over 4,500, but like even at just the 3,500 mark, and you lift your foot off the throttle, you can actually see uh, at night the rear lights trigger. So regen is becoming more aggressive at higher RPM. So I think it's maybe like it's a blend of regen plus the um, engine braking, but it's enough to where like Chevy's like, okay, trigger the, the brake lights to come on. But if you do that at like normal, you know, 1,500, 2,000 RPM, range it's not doing that at all um so again you can hear that that whine sound like a supercharger a little bit now watch i'll tip in see how it goes away it's commanding engine torque um versus just ne neutral running that the uh, front motor so another interesting part about all of this is um v4 motor you know afm active field management you know, in the Stingrays, if you got above like 10, 15% throttle, I don't know, you know, but very light throttle, AFM turned off. Well, in this car, in the E-Ray, AFM stays on considerably longer. Like, I want to say 30 or 40% throttle angle. I, I would, nah, maybe not that much, 25 or 30% throttle angle. And But what it does is it's not commanding more power from the gas motor to drive it. It actually supplements with the front axle, the front drive, to pull the vehicle through more acceleration and maintain AFM mode longer. So that's really interesting. Honestly, it's pretty cool because like in town, if I just drive it normal, I can get, you know, look at this, I'm getting 22.4 miles per gallon. I, I literally have never been on the freeway. This is completely, I just went and got some gas. I've been driving for nine minutes rural streets, not exceeding 60-ish miles an hour in a neighborhood now, getting 22 miles per gallon. Have not taken this on the freeway yet, but you know, I used to get 24 miles per gallon on a long trip, um, freeway only on the uh, on the Stingray. Um, I think with the added arrow and stuff like this on the on the E-Rain, obviously the weight, I think it's probably not going to be as good, but you know, you know, 22 miles per gallon again in town, it's, that's, that's pretty insane. Um, other things, let's see. Uh, the um, the exhaust 
in my mode with in track for the exhaust noise, it's still closing the valves. So it's still closing. You can hear it even now it's in my mode. You can hear underneath 2000 RPM, it's closing those valves up and you're not getting the full noise. Like you actually have to be in track mode or Z mode with exhaust full on and even below 2000 RPM in my mode or in Z mode, I should say, it's still, you can hear it closing the exhaust valves. Um, I guess you just gotta be full track mode all the time if you want the noise all the time, but that's definitely different from uh, a Stingray. Also, you know, for those that have a Stingray, you know, when you drive the car in um, manual mode, right, you have like the full um, beans on the transmission shift. You get those nice little pops on the upshifts, like the one, two, and the two, three. Maybe it's because I'm not past the 500 mile break-in point, but it's not as prevalent on this car. Like you don't have kind of the garbles and the pops and stuff. And this thing has a hooker black heart exhaust on it. So, you know, apples, apples comparison to my Stingray, this doesn't seem as rowdy yet. You know, again, that might change. Um, the other things, you know, obviously this being a 24, it's got lane keep assist, which is shut off. And if you guys don't know where that is, it's, it's up here. If you're like, like me where you're searching for the button, um, I hate it. So that's off. I have the, um, you know, the, the anti-crash turned off, just set to warning, you know, low warning. Um, the auto uh, high beams on the 24, that's really nice. Uh, I like having that. The front, tr the frunk, uh, you don't have to like do the double click. It, it, it closes like the, the trunk now on these where you just do the single click and it sucks it down. That's for anyone that owns a 23, 2023, you know, it's probably one of the nicest features, honestly. Um, let's see, the charge plus mode, haven't really used it. Um, haven't really needed to because the engine does it just fine recapturing its own electricity. Um, having the electric output mode on the on the uh, display over here is pretty cool. Um, we set it up, or I set it up over here to show uh, the engine drive uh, or the yeah the motor front drive here. Um, and um, again, you can kind of set up all these different you know battery temperatures and and things like that. Um, this is this car is uh, cacti. Um, with Artemis interior, and I gotta tell you, I really like it. You know, it, a lot of the photos show like it's a really green tone. It really isn't that green tone at all. It's got a very, very light green tone, primarily gray. Accents really nice with the cacti, especially with the stealth interior. I'm really, really um, happy with how this car came out. Um, one last bit I would say for now is uh, it was you know when you're driving away in your your Stingray or Z06, you know you kind of kind of flare the throttle a little bit and the clutch will slip a little bit right and you can kind of get the little rev little you know vroom, vroom, you know as you're coming out like you're like coming off a clutch can't do that in this car this car's got an electric front axle like i made that mistake and you know i thought i was going to rear in somebody in front of me not really but you know um the reality is that electric motor on the front is ready to go at any point in time so you know if you're driving this thing in manual mode you kind of had to temper your throttle and and drive it a with a little bit more grace because if you go to tip in hard, it's the things all will drive now. It's just gonna, it's just gonna launch. So um, that kind of covers everything uh, for the car for now that I um, have come across so far. So yeah, any questions um, or any other topics you want covered, uh, drop me a comment and uh, I'll get to them um, probably in another 250 miles when we hit 500 and go get some uh, dry launches and see what this thing does. Thanks.